Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. I guess you could call this homemade. I was basically on a plane from Canada to the United States and I was bored and I had a notebook and a pen. I just sat down and started making up problems. But all the problems that I made up were of the same type. a to the power b times x to the power c equals d. Of course it needs to satisfy certain criteria, we can talk about that one day. But anyways, this is one of the equations that came up. I kind of made a table of different values, so on and so forth. Anyways, maybe I'll one day I'll make a separate video to share with you these ideas. Anyways, let's get started. So we have x to the power 2x to the 8th equals 1,728. Wow, that's such a large number. So I kind of made this number large on purpose so that uh, it wouldn't be easy to guess. I know you probably know, at least some of you know the strategy here, the trick, but if you don't, uh, let's see, hopefully you're going to learn something new. Anyways, I talk too much, I try to change that, but uh, bear with me. So one, one of the things I want you to notice is that this expression has an exponent that has an exponent, and that exponent in this case is 8. and that exponent, I mean the exponent for the x, uh, has a term that has a coefficient of 2. So the relationship between these two numbers is extremely important because that's basically the, the critical part of our solution. Make sense? So I want you to understand the general idea. And like I said earlier, uh, hopefully we can make a video one day uh, on this in the general case. Maybe I can even um, present this in a live stream. I was thinking about it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, we can do a live session of Q&A and maybe go over some of the stuff like this. Okay, let me know what you think. So here's what we're going to do. So 2 and 8, 2 divides 8, that's good. If it doesn't, then we're in kind of trouble, but not too much. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. Wouldn't that be nice if they were the same? Now, why am I saying that? Because if you had x, x to the power 8x to the 8th, where these numbers are equal, then you could just write this as x to the power 8 to the power x to the 8th. Yes, this is the most critical part. That's what we're going to try to do. And we can do it because 2 divides 8. Again, number theory helps, right? Divisibility criteria. Okay, great. So now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead. Let me clean this up. We're going to go ahead and raise both sides to the fourth power, right? But before we did that, shouldn't we check on 1728? That kind of looks like a date, doesn't it? Like, um, kind of like a war maybe, something that happened. I'm pretty sure something interesting happened in history on 1728. If you do know, please let me know. So once we do that, left-hand side is going to be good, but what's going to happen on the right-hand side? Let's find out what happens with this huge number. So 1,728 can be factored into mm, 2 times something, right? Let's think about it. How do you uh, divide this number by 2? Well, 1,700, half of that is 850. Add 14 to it, and you got the answer. You get the trick? Hopefully you do. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but this one is easy to do. 2 times 432, and then I can keep doing this. 2 times 2 times 2 times 216. Uh-oh, I get something familiar. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 108. And I know 108 is 3 times 36. And yay, that's definitely going to help me. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. And then 3 times 36. But 36 is 4 times 9. So let me write it that way. Great. Now, this is very helpful. Why did I pick 4 times 9? Because uh, 4 and 9 are prime powers. So now we can write it as follows. 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2, 2. That's going to give me 2 to the 6th power times 3 to the 1st, 3 to the 2nd. That's going to give me 3 to the 3rd power. So 1,728 in its prime factorization is 2 to the 6th power times 3 to the 3rd power. So how does that help? Well, I just said that we were going to raise it to the 4th power. So hopefully that is going to help us, right? But before then, can I express this as a something, as a power of a single number? That's going to be the nice part. Notice that 3 goes into 6 twice, so that gives us an idea about a square times a prime. 
So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to write this as 2 to the second power times 3, and then use a common power, kind of like factor out the power, sort of. And now 2, two squared times 3 is 12, and yes, that is 12 cubed. And how do you think I came up with this number? I just cubed 12. Why 12? You'll see in a little bit why. Okay, so let's go ahead and box this number and use it in our expression. So what did we have? We had x to the power 2x to the 8th equals 12 to the 3rd. Awesome. Now we're going to raise both sides to the 4th power for the men uh, reason mentioned before. Notice that I told you 2 times 4 is 8, so that's going to be good. But not only that, on the right-hand side, notice that you're going to get 12 to the power 12. That's why I started with 12 to the third power. Well, where did I get that from? I'll explain that later. Okay, great. So now we get x to the power 8x to the 8th equals 12 to the power 12. So notice that uh, you can come up with a number and then work it backwards and you'll have a problem. Okay? So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as x to the 8th to the power x to the 8th. Notice that my goal was to write this as a to the power a or t to the power t or whatever. And both sides are in that form, so that's kind of nice. If you have a to the a equals b to the b, or if you have t to the t equals a to the a, the, the second one I like better because the left-hand side looks more like a function because I'm kind of going to give you the graph. Uh, no, I don't think I have a graph, but I'll draw the graph real quick. Hand-drawn. Okay. So, in this case, can I safely say that t is always a? Yes and no. Depends. Depends on the situation. So, we're going to talk about that. Let's go ahead and make a graph of the function f of t equals t to the power t. So, we're going to get the following function like this. This is going to be 1, 1. Obviously, we have a hole because 0 to the power 0 is not well defined for this function. This is t, this is f of t, by the way. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the intersection point, right? Notice that uh, our function has a minimum, and that actually occurs at 1 over e, and this is going to be 1 over e to the power 1 over e. Anyways, it doesn't matter, no big deal. But our value in this case, so if you call this t, we have t to the power t equals 12 to the 12, so I'm interested in the y value to be 12 to the power 12, which is a very large number, by the way, you know, 1,728 and raise it to the fourth power, you're going to get a very large number. It's probably going to be in the billions. Anyways, our graph, no matter, it's not going to fit here, but hopefully you get the idea, it's going to intersect the graph at that single point, which means we have one solution. Well, according to this, the t value is single, t equals 12, that's it. But what is t? t is x to the eighth power. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm saying that if x to the 8 to the x to the 8 is 12 to the 12, then I'm saying that x to the 8 is 12. Make sense? That's the only solution. But this gives us two solutions because 8 is even. So x can be the 8th root of 12 or the opposite of that. And guess what? This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to comment on what you think about the live stream that I'm planning to do. And be safe until next time. Bye-bye.